complex and sometimes crazy world. Overcoming the world's challenges and finding meaning in day-to-day -day life can be really overwhelming for just one person. Now, I've heard a lot of talks about how much just one person can do. This isn't one of those talks. <laughs> this talk is about the power of interaction. As a theoretical physicist, I've studied the interactions of particles from the nanoscale to an astronomical one. And those same principles can be applied to our everyday life. Because through interactions, there's order in complexity. And there is beauty in randomness. There is emergence. Before I was a physicist, I was a really curious kid. And my backyard growing up opened up to this beautiful, expansive field overlooking the Santa Cruz Mountains. And like a lot of kids, I really enjoyed climbing trees. And so one of the things that I really loved to do was after school, I'd throw my backpack down, probably make a complete mess, and I'd go into my backyard, and in the corner was this cute little tree. And I'd climb up and sit on a perfect branch, and I'd look out over those mountains and just watch the world. Because many afternoons, the fog would roll in. And it would creep across the mountains from the Pacific Ocean to cover the Bay Area in this beautiful blanket. And so from my branch, I would watch these fingers of fog creep slowly across to cover my neighborhood. And I would wonder, how is it that millions and millions of tiny droplets of water could come together and create this amazing spectacle, create shapes like fingers, and so questions like this led me to physics, because I really wanted to know about atmospheric phenomenon like fog. I wanted to know what happened when we smashed atoms together. I wanted to know how things work. And through physics, I discovered a beautiful language that really helped me answer many of those childhood questions. And even better, it opened doors to questions I hadn't even thought of. And through it all, the main theme was the importance of interactions. Now, in physics, there's a quest for a theory of everything. And physicists have been working on this for centuries. We want this set of equations that can describe everything about the physical world in a neat little mathematical package. And we don't have one yet. But what we do have is, at least on a people scale, we have conventional non-relativistic quantum mechanics. <laughs> and don't worry before you think, what the heck does that mean? And how does it apply to me? See, in physics, this set of equations really just describes basic systems around us. So things like bouncing balls, falling rocks, airflow. And so when you're learning to become a physicist, you learn how to work with this set of equations pretty early on. The problem is, we solve it for things like hydrogen, which is just one atom. Because in fact, you cannot solve this set of equations exactly for anything more than a small handful of atoms. So really, this theory of everything doesn't tell us anything at all. <coughs> like if we look at oxygen and hydrogen atoms, we cannot predict the behavior that we see in water. The characteristics and properties of water are way beyond just a bunch of hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms in a room. The characteristics of water are emergent. Let's look at another example. The flight of a single bird. Now, as this bird flies over your head, it might catch your attention for just a moment. You might turn up, look, See, okay, what was it that passed my field of vision? But just as quickly, it's lost your attention. And you go back to walking down the street, drinking a cup of coffee. It's not that exciting. Now let's look at an entire flock. These birds don't fly together randomly. They turn, they lift, they change direction all together. 
Now this is attention getting. This is mesmerizing. The have created a pattern seemingly out of chaos that is stunningly beautiful. And more importantly, it's not just beautiful, it's different. The flock is exhibiting behavior that no single bird can replicate on its own. These new properties emerge with no one directing them and no one able to foresee the characteristics from studying the flight of a single bird. This is the heart of the theory of emergence. We cannot predict, we cannot model the behavior of a system from knowledge of just one piece of it. The emergent behavior arises from actions of all the individual parts following a fixed set of rules. There are no leaders. There's just more birds. For the flock, they have a common goal, safety. And to achieve this goal, they follow a simple set of rules. Stay a certain distance from your nearest neighbor, meaning don't fly into one another. <laughs> and avoid predators at all costs. And yet from this simplicity, we get this magnificent display. Now Aristotle said the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Now mathematically speaking, that might seem like saying 2 plus 2 equals 5, which doesn't make any sense. But we saw the proof in his statement. Because the birds worked together, they respond to one another. They're not acting alone. And as a result, they created a beautiful and dynamic pattern. And we see this pattern throughout nature. The key is in the interaction of the parts. Because without the interaction, the pattern would not exist. We see this in sand dunes. The ripples are created by wind. The coordination of ant colonies and the fractal patterns in cauliflower at the market. No one piece of any of these systems could exhibit these patterns on their own. We are complex systems, some of us more so than others. We are emergent. There are an estimated 86 billion neurons in the human brain. And there are trillions of cells dying and replicating and being replaced all working together in your body to make us who we are. No one cell defines us. And similarly, our communities are complex systems. No one person can define a community. The problems that we face are even more complex. They have many interacting variables, that are changing drastically at any moment. There are very few instances when linear logic can solve anything. If we want to affect real change, if we want to strengthen our communities, we have to use an emergent strategy. This emergent strategy means we have to focus on our interactions with one another. You alone cannot create a movement. You cannot change the world. You need your nearest neighbors. You need to interact with them. And it's through those interactions and the nature of those interactions that emergent behavior can arise. Of emergence, it's been said, it's not magic. But it feels like magic. So how do we create magic? How do we catalyze emergent behavior in the world around us? Remember, complexity can arise very quickly, even through simple interactions. So we don't have to try and solve our world's problems all at once. We just need to start with a simple interaction. Do you want positive change? Start with a smile. Be kind. Talk to your neighbors. 
Find a common goal, like the starlings. It doesn't have to be as dire as trying to avoid a predator. It can be as simple as wanting a cleaner beach and asking a neighbor to help you with your cleanup. There don't have to be leaders. There just needs to be lots of interactions. We as communities and as complex systems can react to change. Collectively, we can respond and create positive social movements in a complex world. But we have to do it together. We have to interact. Now, this isn't rocket science. It is theoretical physics. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to leave you with this. One water molecule is not fluid. One gold atom is not metallic. One neuron is not conscious. And one amino acid is not alive. To see the changes and the results that we want to in our communities, we must focus on the interactions with one another, and especially with our nearest neighbors locally to reach our potential. I'm not going to say I know what can emerge, because I already told you we can't predict that. But what I do know is if we do this, it will be beautiful and it will seem like magic. Thank you. Thank you.